Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to another episode of Sri's daily global COVID-19 show. My name is Sri Srinivasan, and I'm the Marshall Loeb Visiting Professor of Digital Innovation at Stony Brook School of Journalism. I'm coming to you now, right now, live from New York City on the Upper West Side, where we are the epicenter of the epicenter. For 78 days now, we've been on lockdown, and this is our 78th show. That's right, we've been live every single day talking about various aspects of the COVID-19 crisis. We don't focus on the news, but we kind of talk around the news and try to bring you guests and topics and ideas that you may not be seeing on television or on the internet very easily. We want this to be an opportunity for you to ask questions and share what you're feeling and what you're experiencing. So many of you have joined us over the last 78 days that it's been such an uplifting experience for me. So many of you have said this has been a lifeline, that this is an essential show, but I wanna tell you it's essential for me because it has changed my life and helped me get through this very unusual period in all our lives. Right here in the United States, we've crossed the terrible landmark of 100,000 dead folks, and we're seeing uh, the role that misinformation and disinformation has played in this. We're live right now on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, and on LinkedIn. Find me on those platforms, please, and hit share so that your friends and family can join us. You know somebody in the world who would benefit from talking and understanding the issue of misinformation. And that, in fact, is our topic for today. So let me tell you who will be joining us in a couple of minutes. They, they have a couple of minutes off state, so they're sharing right now furiously with their networks on, on these different channels so they can tell their family and friends, and I hope you will too. Tag folks so that they can join us. Our guests are Melish Figanmenche, who is with the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies, and Sam Howie, who is joining us from the Australian Red Cross. Sam is at, at about 11, PM in Australia, so we're very grateful to her, especially uh, for staying up for this with us. But this is not the record, and I will tell her about the record and a guest who joined us at 2 a.m. Uh, local time. So she wins second prize, but we're so grateful. So stay tuned to meet both of them. Please tag your friends right now. And if you're interested in our archive of events, this is, as we said, show number 78. Just go on to YouTube and you'll find our entire archive, including conversations with um, topics around Shakespeare and pandemics with two of the world's greatest experts on Shakespeare. We met the poet and novelist Sapphire, whose book Push became the Oscar-winning movie Precious. Well, we met Ambassador Richard Verma, who is US ambassador to India. We've uh, met experts from so many uh, different fields. We even have spoken to 25 different physicians, nurses, and medical experts in these 78 days. And as I said, this has been a, uh, a critical part of my day, and I know it's been very helpful to people around the world. So please tell us where you're watching from in the comments. That's one of the things we'll be doing in a minute, what we call our global tour, to show our speakers who's here from around the world. But meanwhile, we have to pay some bills, as you can imagine. So we want to do that right now. We want to thank our sponsor, Priyamvada Sustainability Consulting, for advertising with us. They can be your chief sustainability officer. They're a consulting firm. Please go to clean-futures.com, clean-futures.com. They're facilitating sustainable development for a clean future. And we're very grateful to our friend Sonali Chitre, for sponsoring this ad and sponsoring the show. Maybe you know somebody who'd like to be a sponsor. We have very reasonable rates. Just have them email me. You can see my email address right on the screen, sri at sri.net. We also want to tell you about the work my company does, DigiMentors. We create these shows for other folks. So if you wanted to, ever wanted to have your own talk show or your nonprofit would like one or your company, let us know. We also take conferences and turn them online. Our motto, don't cancel or postpone your real life event without talking to us. We can be 10% of your production team or 110% of your production team. We do consulting, training all around 
virtual events, as well as how to amplify the events that you're already doing and make them seen around the world. And finally, I want to tell you that in this time of disaster, one of the things that has been so hard is watching people be unemployed by this, being furloughed and losing their jobs. More than 30 million Americans and millions of people around the world have lost their job. I have lost my job in the past, and I know how hard one person losing a job is. I cannot imagine the toll this is taking around the world. So I wanted to do something about it in a very tiny, tiny way, and that is that to upskill everyone on social media. So I talked to our dear friends at Muckrack, and we are pleased to tell you that we can offer now a free certification course in early June for everybody in the world. Fundamentals of social media for journalists, PR professionals, and everyone. Please take a screenshot or take out your phone and take a picture of this and send it to anybody who would benefit from this free certification course open to any profession, open to any age group, open to any background, any experience level. We will dig in and give you the fundamentals as of June 2020. My colleague Linda Bernstein and I are working very hard on putting together a really powerful and important course. So please share this with your family and friends. Just go to mrac.co slash social, mrac.co slash social. Everybody, please do that. All right, enough promotion. Now I wanna promote our guests and bring them to, we are so lucky to be able to talk about um, the topic of misinformation with these two experts who are joining us, one from Geneva and one from Australia. So let's bring them on right now and please say hello to Melish and to Samantha. Hi. Hi, Sri. Hi. How are you doing? I can't believe you did 70, 78 shows. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we've been going live um, on the same platform, doing the same thing since, I don't know, two months now and we've only done 20, so I'm super impressed. <laughs> Well, you've also been a guest on our show, and we're very grateful for that. You you and your colleague Dante came on and talked about how you're using at the Red Cross, you're using TikTok uh, as, a, uh, as a platform, and it was so instructive to so many of us, and so we're very grateful. Uh, tell us where you are, and I always ask, how are you doing? How's your family? How are your colleagues? You want to go ahead, Sam? Yeah, no, no, Melish, why don't oh, you? Sure. Hi, guys. Um, so I'm in Sydney at the moment. Um, and um, as you probably know, um, restrictions are starting to lift here. So there is um, an air of cautious optimism, which is fantastic. Um, but I feel like um, there's underlying um, uncertainty and fear, uh, which is why um, we're so thrilled to be joining the global network that we're here to talk to you about today. It's also very late here, Shri. I'm, I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm, I'm um, disappointed to hear that I've got second place. <laughs> so let me tell you, we had Dr. Bernadette Atagang joining us from Hamburg uh, for a doc Ask the Doctor conference uh, show, and mm. when she got off the air, it was two a.m. in wow. Germany. So we will try to get you off the air before uh, <laughs> two a.m. It's now only eleven fifteen p.m., but I'm so grateful. Thank you, and thank you for joining us. Let's go to Melish. Yeah, so um, I'm here in Geneva. It's also, things are slowly opening up, which opens up like a whole new can of worms. What do I do when I actually go outside? Um, so people are also very cautious, but a little confused. Um, like, do I still have to wear a mask? Do I still have to wash my hands? Of course. So yeah, it's it's interesting, the, the state that we're in now, um, but, so far, so good. Things are things are things are opening up slowly and well here in Switzerland. Well, we're glad to hear that. And you are a New Yorker who just moved, right? About a year ago, is that correct? About a year ago, yeah. I'm, well, I was living in Jersey City, so don't hate on Jersey. <laughs> um, and I was working in the city uh, for a while, yeah, and moved over here to Geneva. It's a very different lifestyle. Ah, yes, the beautiful. We wanted beautiful. to show you Jersey. So that's the Hudson River. So just everybody watching, that's the Hudson River. That's New Jersey over there. According to the play Hamilton, the musical, they say everything is legal in New Jersey. And I'm gonna <laughs> turn the camera this way. This is Midtown Manhattan that you see in the distance. We're on the Upper West Side. And look at rush hour on a Thursday in New York. Empty streets. Wow, right? yeah, wow. That's, and that's a subway. Do you see the subway station right there? One person oh, yeah. walking very slowly in there. That would be packed at the moment at rush hour 
and the only reason the cars you see at all are the cars that are going into a highway uh, right here. And there's the Hudson River. And all the way in the distance are the skyscrapers. They're scraping the sky right now. That's why they're hidden by that fog. But that's what you're seeing right now. Yeah, we have a better view than you do in Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. Yes, yes, you do. In fact, some of the most expensive real estate in Jersey are those galaxy apartments that we just saw that are West right New York. Denver. Yeah, that's right, or in West New York. So yeah. um, thank you, Melish, for coming and uh, being here with us. I also wanted to tell everyone that you made a really smart move getting out of New York a year in advance. So that was fun. <laughs> I knew it was coming, you know. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so let's talk about this topic. This was your idea, Melish, that we should be doing more about misinformation. And I loved it. And that's what we said, let's do it. So tell me how you frame this. Uh, and, and what you see as the fundamental issue uh, of our time with this. Yeah, so we are in what we're calling an infodemic, right? So people don't have access to, or ex they don't have access or they're not following the right people to get the, the right factual information. So we saw that there was a need for individuals to, um, to get factual information from people that they are already following, from people that they're already engaging with on social media. Because that's where we all get our, 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 our information from these days, right? Like how many people actually have a separate app for news or do they follow everything on Facebook or on, on Instagram? So we saw the need for that. Um, and an agency had graciously decided that they wanted to do some pro bono work and they are, managing most of the influencers on their side for completely for, completely for free for us. Um, and um, yeah, so we, we at the IFRC said we, we have this ability to get factual information from our local communities um, and to use influencers, very engaged, um, authentic followers, because these are people that follow them, follow um, these are people that follow influencers for a reason, right? They really trust and believe their content. So if we can have these influencers be the beacon, be the, the catalyst for this really important factual information, then we will be able to flood social media with, with real news and not fake news. So that was the whole idea behind it. We, we think that in factual information is almost as important as medicine or a, or a vaccine. Like it, it's so important. The other day I read an article from BBC on, on, um, on the, the, the human cost of, on misinformation. And some people like they really trust fake news. So there's this huge gap, right, of factual information and we as IFRC and our local Red Cross and Red Crescents wanted to come in, fill that gap and be able to provide people with factual information. Thank you and, and thank you for jumping on that. <clears throat> and let's uh, get uh, Samantha's view as well uh, about this and what are you doing about this uh, out in uh, Sydney and in Australia? So we've really just um, joined the Global Network. We've already seen a great um, response from a few amazing influencers. Um, but I think that we really saw the power of influencers within Australia um, from the recent bushfires, which you obviously heard about, and just the power of um, having people with a profile at mass really um, not only to raise funds, but to raise awareness, um, to really be a catalyst for um, having global eyes on a situation. And this is something that um, has affected everyone in the world in some way, shape or form. And um, we really were passionate about joining this global movement so that we could be a part of um, dispelling some of the myths, but also sh um, sharing kindness, messages of hope and how we can create global unity to get through this all together. And that point that we're all together is so important right now. So thank you for uh, talking about that. We're now gonna do what we call our global tour where I'm gonna tell you where people are watching from and I hope everyone will continue to type into their comments. Tell us where you're watching from. Tell us how you're feeling. Day 78 of the lockdown in the US. Some places it's been on lockdown much longer. Some places obviously a lot shorter. So let's take a look. And either of you wanna jump in on any of those, either you see you recognize someone or a city that you love or something you wanna say. So I'm gonna have Mellish respond to this. Jonathan's watching from Union Square in New York. And I know hey, that you- Hey, Jonathan, thanks <laughs> for watching. 
And I know you love New York City and you've spent lots of time in Union Square. Yeah, I'm I'm imagining that it's kind of dead right now, but um glad that I'm glad that you're out and get maybe getting some sunshine. I don't know what well, it's a little cloudy in New York today. So hey, thanks for watching. What's Fresh one air. what's one thing you miss about New York City in terms of food? Oh, I was gonna say food. Um <laughs> If you, if, you know, um, if we were able to magically uh, drop you in Manhattan today. Poke bowls. Yeah. I want a poke bowl. <laughs> poke bowl. But uh, you, you can get poke bowls uh, almost anywhere these days, can't you? Not yet. Yeah, you can. But they're like like the New York version of a poke bowl, just like the New York version of pizza or the New York version of anything is better than anywhere. <laughs> yeah. You're going to get some angry words now coming in here. Laura, watch, watch out. Sorry. Uh, Anand's watching from Andhra Pradesh in India. Angela is watching from Long Island. Uh, Christy says, good evening. Uh, Jonathan is tagging his friends, folks. Tag your friends so they can join this very important conversation. Uh, Ariel says, good morning from the traditional land stolen from the Lape, also known as New York City. Absolutely. I mean, this is one of the things that we're seeing is hyper awareness of what we've done to the planet, what we've done to our resources, what we've done to people all over the world in terms of these last decades of uh, of the way we've consumed and, uh, and, and developed the world. So uh, thank you for acknowledging that. Ariel and I worked at the Metropolitan Museum where I was chief digital officer and he was on my team. Ariel's fantastic colleague. Uh, let's see, Rusudan is watching, says, good morning, very good topic. Many people are victims of misinformation. Absolutely. Shweta is watching from Sweet Sugarland. I presume Sugarland, Texas, unless there's another place with that name. And Sam, Angela says, I love Australia. <laughs> uh, Anand was uh, was praising the view earlier, and uh, uh, let's see, uh, lots of people coming in. Norm is watching from Brooklyn, and uh, he says hi from Brooklyn. A LinkedIn user is joining us from Boston. Catherine from Huntington Beach. Norm says ready to emerge cautiously from lockdown. Brooklyn is starting once again to rock. Jonathan said, no, not quite dead. It's the East Village as well, and it is, has its own beat. And uh, Doug is awake early in San Francisco. So we have San Francisco all the way to Sydney. I think that's the time zone. Unless one of our friends in Hawaii joins us, we, we've had them before. And uh, uh, they expose the truth that some don't like because of their own narrow prejudice. They're talking about the media exposing uh, mm -hmm. untruth, and that's a problem. Shweta says, Yes, Texas. So the problem I was referring to, the people spreading the news, obviously we want journalists to be spreading good information. Uh, so many comments coming in from all over. Thank you so much. Let's get to the questions. Let's ask Sam to first explain how all these international Red Crosses work because your Red Cross is not my Red Cross, is not someone else's Red Cross, right? So if you can give us a little bit and also what is the exact work that you are responsible for within Australia's Red Cross? Uh, so I'm responsible, so I sit within um, the media team in the Markham's Red Cross and my role is responsible for, um, I work solely with influencers and ambassadors and so I recruit people to support all the work of Red Cross. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my role. So I guess that's how um, I feed into the amazing campaign that Millis has created for us. Yeah, and I'm going to ask Millis in, in a little bit to share uh, tell me what links I should go to if there's anything public we can pull up and look at look at what you're doing in just a minute. There's some more comments coming in. Sudeep's watching from Hyderabad. Uh, the Dog Squad India is watching and their only comment is a namaste with a dog. So that's wonderful. And Doug in San Francisco says, we've had traffic on the roads this week for the first time in more than two months. It's scary, he says. And by the way, DougLevy.com, Doug at DougLevy.com. Check out his website because he's already written a book about coronavirus misinformation and communication strategy. Uh, you can buy that there. And also he has a daily newsletter where he gives you three or four headlines that will help you understand the pandemic uh, accurate information. So just go to DougLevy.com or tweet him SFDoug on Twitter. SFDoug, San Francisco Doug, of course, on Twitter. Uh, uh, Vipul says, hi from New Delhi. Don't you think debunking misinformation section should be on our news channel section? And when do you see international travel resuming? So two questions there. Let's go to Amelish first. Do you feel like this should not be separated from the news? Like the news should be fighting misinformation? We did, you see that, did you see that Twitter for the first time ever? I don't know if I should be talking. <laughs> Twitter for the first time ever was debunking 
somebody political and putting a correct link at the bottom of his tweet. Um, so I think 100% misinformation should be called out and we should, um, I mean, on news channels, that's what I think Vipul is saying, that it should be on our, a channel on our news section, exactly. Um, I don't know if it should be there. I think that we should, um, because that might be lifting up what other people are saying and um, giving that, shedding more light on that. I would say just making more factual information available in more accessible ways is the best way to go about it, other than, rather than talking more about the thing, the, 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 the fake news that other people are saying. Because I think then might some people, some people might misread the message and then more people will just talk about the, the news that you don't want people to hear, right? So that's what I think. And what about this question of travel? Tell us like how much did you used to travel internationally and do you miss it or are you happy to be? Uh, well, I, I mean, I can't really talk too much about how much it'll be resuming, but I will say that, I mean, living as an expat in another country, you feel very isolated when you don't have the ability to go back home and see family. Um, and thank goodness for, you know, FaceTime and things like that. Um, that like my son still is able to like recognize his grandma, but like, it's just such a weird, it's such a weird feeling to, to not know when I'm going to be able to see family again. Yeah, that is, that is really tough. So let's go with that. Um, same question. Let's ask that of, uh, Sam Howie of Australian Red Cross. Yeah, you know, I'm in the same position about um, international travel, obviously being um, an island, or albeit a very big one. Um, Australians are notorious for loving to travel and explore the world. And my, and my sister actually lives in New York too, and I have a brand new niece that I've never met before. So um, really very keen to start travelling as soon as possible. But who, whoever knows when that will be is, I guess, anyone's, um, anyone's guess, really. And what about this idea of the misinformation being separated out instead of being built into, I mean, covering the misinformation being built into instead of covering it separately? Yeah, look, um, I agree. I think that um, particularly in Australia, we have so many, um, so many different sources of information, particularly because um, each of our different states and territories have slightly different rules about um, when restrictions will lift, they have slightly different rules about how many people you can have, um, I think we are bombarded with information as it is. Um, so I think that I think that particularly like people need to be able to find sources of truth and um, it's confusing as it is, all of the information to be able to separate that from information, if that kind yeah. of makes sense. Yeah, it, 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 it's certainly, what you were saying, Melise. Yeah. It, it certainly it certainly makes sense to think about it in that fashion. So if you're just joining us, we're in conversation with experts from Geneva as well as from Sydney. Let's have Sydney uh, wave so that they, they know who's in Sydney and who's in Geneva. And uh, I'm in New York, so this is a global conversation with people watching from San Francisco to Singapore to India. And uh, we are we're doing this so that we can understand how we can fight misinformation. Everybody has a role to play. And you heard Mellish say something very important that getting accurate information is as important or almost as important as getting ac good healthcare, right? Uh, healthcare you can trust and uh, information you can trust. And sometimes they're the same thing. So in a couple of minutes, we will also talk about the different platforms and what they're doing, good and bad. And we'll also want to get uh, from Mellish uh, some of the examples of the influencer work we're doing. So if anybody watching this now has wanted to work with influencers, wanted to learn what is the best way to engage ambassadors, influencers, things like that. You will want to stay tuned so you can see this, but please share this with your friends, tag your friends so that they can join us. And please, if you haven't done that already, go onto my YouTube page, youtube.com slash Srinet and subscribe so that you can get uh, information and watch all the archives of, or access all our archives of 78 shows that we've done so far. By the way, uh, Melish, one of my friends wrote to me saying, sorry, I missed your show the other day about something. And I said, no one's watching every show. Even my own family is not watching every show. <laughs> the only reason they even knew what I was doing every day was because I was shouting in the living room. And I can tell you now that since we last met, you were on show, I think number 30 or something like that. And now it's number 78. I'm in a new venue. Why? Because I got kicked out of my home. My wife, <laughs> without asking me, called our friend who lives in our building and said, 
uh, we are going to kill him. So please oh let him use the apartment or we will need to use your apartment for the wake and the funeral and all of that. So what do you want? And I was wondering, I noticed your background change. It's, it's not a virtual background. <clears throat> it's a real, <clears throat> it's a real background. And um, we're so grateful to our friends for letting me do this. <clears throat> now you can hear that in my voice. But part of the reason I'm sharing all of this is to say that uh, uh, this is a time where fighting misinformation is so crucial. People are dying because of misinformation. We saw that uh, where when we had the president of the United States uh, saying that you can try bleach or, uh, or, or saying that hydroxychloroquine is the way to go when everyone was telling us it's not. Scientific information must be accurate that you're sharing. We don't want to get political with our Red Cross friends here, but it is important to acknowledge this. And so now let's go into talking with Melish about what the IFRC is doing in terms of ambassadors and where can I show people what we're doing right now? Yeah, so first I wanna go back. You were saying this is a, a global conversation with everybody from around the world. And I think that's really important because that's something that this campaign is really trying to achieve is to not only get people from influencers from Australia and from the US and from UK, but to get people from all corners of the world. We're working right now with our, our Red Cross co colleagues in Nepal, trying to bring on influencers from Nepal. Um, we have people that have signed up in Ghana. We have people that have signed up in, in Mexico. So really we have people, we're trying to get as local as possible through our local Red Cross and Red Crescent societies to be able to speak to as many people as possible. So Sri, if you go to Instagram and you search hashtag spread facts, not fear, um, then you'll be able to see some really good examples of um, influencer posts thus far. I wanted to I wanted to do a quick shout out to influencers and make sure that whoever's watching doesn't feel like I'm not I want to get involved, but I'm not an influencer. Um, we should be very clear that there are multiple types of influencers, right? There's the celebrity, there's the, the fashion influencer that has millions of followers, but there's also the micro influencer. What we're trying to achieve is is really is really have that connection with anybody anybody that has an engaged following you could have a couple thousand followers but if you have a super high engaged following that's what we want we have we want we want influencers that their followers trust them so if you feel that way if you think that you have a very engaged following um, you should definitely, I should have come on here with my link. <laughs> you can, you can tweet me. I'm at, uh, Melis Minet. Tweet me and I'll send you a link. That's what we'll Thank do. You. Thank you, Melis. Uh, yeah. I, I appreciate that. Let me just get this banner off. We're hiding Sam there in the corner. Uh, so a couple of things, uh, just to be clear. So first thing we want everyone to follow, obviously IFRC so they can, uh, they can uh, find you on Instagram as well. And, also and Australian and Red Cross. Yeah, uh, I'm <laughs> sorry. And Australian Red Cross, yeah, we'll, we'll look at that as well. And one of the things that um, I want to uh, show to everyone is the way in which big organizations like this work with influencers. They they have a team that works with influencers. We I do some work with the in, uh, UN Refugee Agency, I, uh, the uh, UNHCR, and they have a team, the Goodwill Ambassador team. I think the UN really pioneered this idea of Goodwill Ambassadors uh, and the re range uh, and uh, uh, an impact that they can have. And now so many people are doing it. And so we'll get some tips from these folks as well. Uh, and Melissa, I just want to say I did not keep scrolling because sometimes you have to be careful when uh, scrolling on Instagram. You don't know what you're going to get. So that's why I paused here. I completely here. understand. Uh, and that's what happens, right? When you're doing something good in the world, there'll be somebody out there to punish you by trolling you and yeah. going, jumping onto your hashtag and things like that. How do you deal with that? I mean, you really can't. Uh, the, the only thing that you can do is, is just continue flooding the internet with more of the correct sort of hashtag content, the content for your hashtag that you want to see. Um, there's a lot of people, even when, even when we were choosing influencers, um, a lot of the questions were, how can you, what if people, what if you see in some of the posts, like the lower right hand corner, the heart post has this little stamp on it. Um, uh, yeah, there's a stamp that says IFRC, it's verified by us. 
uh, it's factual, right? The, our first wave of content was just about solidarity. And we asked our influencers to show a heart. So one of the questions I received was, what if, um, what if a, an influencer just takes the stamp and posts something and says that it's factual? Like you, you can't control that really, this is the internet. But the one thing that you can do is continue posting, continue working with more influencers and just, uh, and flood the, flood the internet with as much of the factual information as you can. So this is a really great example. This is one of the first posts that we came out with. Um, we asked influencers to just share a heart in the way that their audience would would connect with best, right? So this influencer is likely a, a, um, a fashion influencer. So she shared a heart to say as an act of solidarity that we're all in this together, um, that she's going to be taking part in this campaign called Spread Facts Not Fear. Um, and this is the intro to her audience saying, I'm gonna be doing this, watch out, you're gonna be getting some really factual information coming from me soon. So. Um, yeah, this is a really great example. So just a, a quick question. What is keeping anybody from putting the IFRC logo on their own post? There's really, like I said, there's there's nothing that we can do. It's really hard that you, there's going to be haters, like you said, no matter what. Um, but uh, we know that there's something else that we're, we're, we're asking our influencers to do is to put a, well, a red circle around their, their profile pictures so that they know that Oh, their followers know that they're actually um, they're actually an IFRC or an Australian Red Cross influencer. Um, some have some have done it, some haven't yet. But we're hoping that there's not going to be that many haters because this is something that really affects us all. Um, this is something that why, why would you want to be a troll on something like this, right? So, Unfortunately, as you know, that's you know they 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 enjoy uh, getting uh, people upset and hurting people. This is what one of the you know cruelty is kind of the point uh, yeah. in what they're doing. Unfortunately, so we're going to look at more of those in just a minute, and we have about fifteen minutes left with our wonderful guests, folks. Please post your questions about working with influencers, about fighting misinformation, about this campaign of spreading facts, not fear. I think is so important. We have people commenting. Let me just bring in some of the comments. Uh, our dog squad friends are in Himachal Pradesh in Northern India. The masks are mandatory, curfew from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. Strictly yeah. observed. That's very tight, isn't it? 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. Normally it's like overnight, but this seems to be during the day. Um, uh, Doug says, the BBC has done a fantastic job reporting on COVID-19 misinformation, lots of data analysis and useful guideline guidance. That's great, folks. So if any of you want to give a shout out to who's been doing it right, let's Let's bring that in as well. Shweta says, in Houston, we have a local channel that does a fact-checking segment in each news broadcast. It's definitely appreciated by viewers. Uh, Michael Downing is in Kansas City area, misses the food in Milano. Oh, that's so sweet because we've done multiple episodes with uh, with our, our friends in Italy. Uh, you know, when this all started, uh, Italy was like the worst uh, hit after China. And we in New York were so blasé about this. Oh, we feel bad for Italy, but we're safe. And then suddenly we're the epicenter and the epicenter of the epicenter, which is just kind of hard to believe that, that is, uh, that's the case. And people are commenting. Vandana has put on the hashtag spread facts, not fear. Vandana is one of my awesome producers, along with Rose Horowitz doing great work. Angela loves that you're getting influencers from Nepal. She herself is from Nepal and a journalist and comms person in New York. You guys can connect. You should join us. <laughs> uh, Israel is in the house. And Ellen says, sorry, I'm late from New York City. You're not late. This will just start again and you can watch. <laughs> uh, and how about this? My mom is watching from Kerala, India. I love you, Amma. Sorry that uh, we're not together. And uh, she uh, she's an amazing dancer of Indian classical dance. That's the avatar you see on the screen right now. Um, our friend Mark Lee is watching from Durham, North Carolina. I don't know if either of you have been there. And uh, he's asking, how do you respond to folks who are posting the anti-vaccine propaganda from people like the lady who claims to have worked with Fauci? So this is also a little bit about that uh, yeah. terrible pan pandemic meme and everything that went along. So I, are either of you ready to talk about either this particular question or around it? Melis, we'll start with you. Um, I don't think I'm ready to talk about the pandemic, but what I will say is that um, is that that is the pandemic is a really good um, a really good example of fake news, right? So um, that's something that we would not like to highlight. 
from our side. And we, we, we understand that it's everybody's sharing it and everybody's really excited because this, it might have an answer to something I've been questioning. And that's why our campaign is here to answer the questions that you, um, that, that you might have. For example, one of our upcoming uh, messaging to influencers is about heat and COVID. So um, asking, uh, everybody's saying, okay, the heat is coming, the summer's coming. Um, it, what does that mean? Does that mean, that, is the sun gonna kill COVID? We actually had um, guidance that came from our climate center as well as WHO, um, the World Health Organization and the World Meteorolo Meteorological <laughs> Organization. And um, that's one of our next uh, messaging to influencers that heat does not stop the spread of COVID. You might be questioning it. You might be starting to share articles that you see, but heat does not stop the spread of COVID. That's just, that's, that's a fact. So, um, and that's one that's something that's a really great example of something that we'd like to when people are there's already there are these rumors starting we'd like to squash those rumors and try to and and to replace that with factual information we want to make it clear that if they, those are not just starting now the president of the united states in february said april it'll be gone because the heat kills everything the heat does have an impact obviously on the virus in certain ways and there are things that you can do like nuking your you know your home delivered food it certainly doesn't uh, yeah. Hard to do things like that, but that doesn't mean that you won't uh, get the uh, you won't get coronavirus uh, during the when the weather is warmer automatically. There may be some effect, but those are yeah. so nuance doesn't work well on the internet, right? Would you agree with that? And yeah. and that's what the trolls and uh, others kind of thrive on uh, mm -hmm. in that. So let's ask uh, Sam in Sydney. I like that Sam in Sydney. Uh, please tell us uh, how you are encountering this and. To me, people who live, you know, where we're living in the worst infodemic place. And uh, I always think of like Canada and Australia as more gentle, genteel places where there's less tro trolls and things like that. Is that true or is it? Um, you no, know, um, I would say there's an element of truth to that. We definitely do get um, a fair share of trolls, but I think that we find um, the spread of misinformation is really centered around fear and uncertainty. Um, and I think that our job um, as Red Cross and indeed as individuals and humanitarians is to help um, dispel that and spread positive messages and um, bring a sense of hope. So rather than it being from a negative connotation, connotation of um, being able to spread the wrong messages, it's trying to actually dispel some of those fears and uncertainty that people have um, by by dispelling those myths and spreading the right the, um, the right information and bringing a sense of calm and hope to people, which is what we're hopefully trying to um, trying to achieve. Yeah, no, and, and I don't think everybody understands that. And that's one, one of the issues we're dealing with. Uh, Melis, uh, tell us how you recruit uh, influencers. You have obviously A-list, super A-list, VVIP, I don't know the terms you use, uh, you know, the big stars, for example, and then you use micro-influencers. Do you use terms like that, first of all? And is that the right way to think about it? So I think actually Sam might be a better person for this question, but I'll start because that's her <laughs> niche. <laughs> um, but I will say that, so for this particular campaign, none of the influencers are being paid. So it's a very different route than when we work with paid influencers. Um, so it's essentially, we did a call out with our partner agency um, to any influencers that are interested in doing this for goodwill, right? Um, so it, we had we didn't discriminate at all. It was anybody from a celebrity to like like we like I mentioned a micro influencer, um, and you have to be. You have to be um, cautious, right? Or not necessarily cautious, but you have to understand that if these this influencers, this is their livelihood, right? They post um, they post on social media for a living, and this is how most of them, a large amount of their income is coming from um, being an influencer. So if they're willing to join this campaign for free, you, you have to work with them and, and work with how the type of content that they'd like to, that they want to share. Um, so from our side, we just did a call out for any influencers that were interested um, in spreading and spreading facts, not fear, <laughs> um, out of their goodwill. So yeah. 
I'd love to hear from you, Sam, though, because like I said, this is really your expertise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so we're really fortunate to have quite a robust influencer um, program in Australia. We work um, quite regularly from very micro influencers um, right up to people that are quite well known. So people that are quite well known will have um, as our ambassadors and will work with a huge range of influencers on a campaign by campaign basis. We work with everyone that's pro bono. Um, and uh, some of our ambassadors were fortunate enough to have come on board for this campaign. Or you Stranger Things fans, look out for um, Jacob Montgomery. He'll be joining the campaign. Um, yeah, so we work with different influencers in different ways, but we find that they all give value. And as you say, Melissa, we're so fortunate to have people come on board because we know this is their livelihood um, and uh, they're often giving up sponsored pace to, su to support the, the mission of Red Cross, which is, um, which is incredible. That, that is really amazing. And there are people who are able to step up and, and participate. We have just a few minutes left with our guests. Folks, please post your questions. Uh, get some answers about things like fighting misinformation, but also how to work with influencers. And we want to talk about that in just a minute. Let's look at some of our comments. Uh, James Ferrari, great last name, is joining us from New York City. Uh, Mark is proud of the North Carolina governor who is not backing down to Trump, who wants to make sure that we're actually safe before agreeing to host the uh, Republican National Conference. And Ashok is watching from Mumbai. We're really grateful to everyone around the world watching. And Mark said lots of curfews have been going on, but doesn't seem to be uh, really enforced. And then Salil is watching from Hyderabad who says, how does one respond to situations when mainstream TV news channels nonchalantly become transmitters of fake news? When proven wrong, they don't even bothering they don't even bother issuing an apology or a, co connect a correction. Let's go to Malice and then to Sam. Yeah, so this is exactly why we are looking to work with influencers because a lot of people don't follow um, trustworthy news, news channels. And if we can work with local influencers throughout, um, so the IFRC, the International Federation of the Red Cross and Red Crescent, we have 192 um, local Red Cross and Red Crescents around the world. So if we can work with local influencers around the world, we feel that we feel that we're going to be the first line of defense when somebody's reading their when somebody's reading their um, social feeds, and they're they're looking for that news that they're going to get the news from an influencer that they trust before they get the news from a news station like that. So that's that's how we're going about it. Thank you, and let's go to Sam. Yeah, I really just want to echo what Malise said. Um, I think that. Obviously, there are unfortunately still a huge um, portion of people out there that do really take the news as gospel, but things are changing and influences are um, really trusted sources of news. And so we're going to go as wide and far as we can to try and spread that, um, spread the uh, correct information and dispel information that's going on about there. And thank you for sharing that. And thank you, Salil, for that question. Very, very nice to see you. Uh, James says it seems uh, the, to be Trump's goal to be reelected and to re -manuf to manufacture misinformation on what his administration did did and did not do. And I can just show you right here. I'm just like bending down to pick up the newspaper to show all of you. This is the uh, Wall Street Journal today. I'm just hiding the address here. And the Wall Street Journal, you can see on the front page, 100,000 deaths, a grim milestone. And uh, so, so sad, 100,000 people dying. Uh, just so you know, uh, you all know, the one of the milestone numbers in American minds has always been 58,000, because that's the number of people that died in the Vietnam War. And when that was now, you know, we've doubled that, basically. And 58,000 was achieved over 12 years. And this was achieved, well, I don't know, achieve is not the right word, which was reached in just 12 weeks. And that's the difference in what we're talking about. And still, misinformation comes every day from the highest office in the United States. And by the way, this is not just an American problem. We're seeing right-wing governments injecting false information all over the world in many, many countries. And I'm not going to name them all here out of respect for our global uh, friends who are here, but this is a problem and we all need to address that. Let's see here uh, who else is co commenting. Uh, do you see the best ways to stop or counter uh, this kind of misinformation. We've been talking about it in many ways. So if people are tuning in now, Melis, give me like three things to stop misinformation. And same with Sam. 
so follow hashtag spread facts, fa spread facts, not fear. If you see the, the stamp, it's either going to have an IFRC logo or Australian Red Cross logo or one of our local um, Red Cross or Red Crescent logos on the, on the, um, the posts. You'll know that it's factual information. So first, follow spread facts, not fear. Um, hashtag. It's going to be mostly available on Instagram. Um, second, uh, if you are an influencer, I see there's going to be a comment coming up next. If you are an influencer, you can shoot me a note. Um, or if you're in Australia, you can shoot Sam a note. <laughs> um, shoot me a note on Twitter. Uh, my handle will show up again later when I'm in full screen. Um, and I'll make sure to get you in touch with the right people so that we can sign you up um, as an influencer. Um, this is a really funny meme. Please keep it on here. <laughs> Um, so that's number one is follow the hashtag. Number two is become an influencer. Um, and number three is if you, if you see, um, if you see something that you quit, you're questioning so, some sort of a, um, a, a news that you, you're questioning that you don't know if it's true, don't share it. <laughs> you have to be careful not to share fake news. Like uh, if you if you don't know the, the, the origin of where it's coming from, don't share it. I don't know where you this is really a global <laughs> effort and, and it's it's just so important that you're doing this and thank you uh, for doing that I should also say that you decided to work with uh, someone who's not really an influencer but you contacted him and said can you participate and that guy was me and uh, <laughs> I, I was I was honored to participate so I haven't posted yet so I thought we would do a group brainstorm here and um, we're gonna show Sam my contribution to the spread Fear, right. uh, uh, spread facts, not fear campaign. So let's, uh, this is still a mock up. So Sam is going to critique it. And then Melis has seen okay. a little bit of this. So <laughs> pressure right. is on you, Sam, to okay. uh, be, be uh, as, as uh, strict as you can on this. So here okay. we go. So uh, what this is, is let me just go over. And, and Melis, you can also lean over on the side. Oh, uh, probably. Okay, there you go. Your Sam is <laughs> hidden away, but uh, uh, here, here's what we did. So this was uh, photos okay. of my friend Mark Leibowitz and me at the Metropolitan Museum. And we're trying to show, I mean, this was uh, shot in 2015. It's kind of hilarious how close we're standing in the first one. And you look I don't like know why we're so close. <laughs> and then, and then not so close in the second one. So uh, critique this for us, please. Is this good? Is, how do I make it better, uh, et cetera? Look, I think it's excellent. I think it speaks to a lot of different audiences. I think it adds relevance. I love it that you've add some, added some art in there. Um, yeah, look, it's, it's, it's great. Uh, are you far enough apart in the second photo? That's a good question. That's a good question. We're, if we're too close in the first one, we're not close. We're not far enough <laughs> in the second is, is what I'd say. But Mark, by the way, is an example of someone who uh, is it just is documenting his life all the time, taking pictures, sharing, and that's why I, I have these pictures uh, that he had posted in something else, and I reuse. I'm reusing it here. I haven't told him yet that we're going to put him on the internet this way. But uh, uh, so, so what do I do? So this is a problem, right? Like I could be trying to help, but making it worse by not showing six feet apart. That's yeah. like three feet apart. So what do you suggest? How do we do? We even put a wrong next to the second one and say that's not far enough, or it's just a star. Can you Photoshop it and <laughs> a really huge painting? I think the thing that I love about this is that you've injected your own personality into it. You've brought a real um, creativity. It speaks to you, and which is, I think, what we're really looking for as a part of this um, global network. We're asking people to create content that is engaging and true to themselves, and um, that they've really kind of thought about the concept. So it gets two thumbs up for me. Yeah, I would say you could maybe in the copy say something like this may not ex be exactly Oh, I can come back to my center screen now. Uh, this may not be exactly two meters um, or whatever the equivalent is in feet. Six feet yeah. I've become such a European. <laughs> um, it, this may not be the exact, uh, the, the exact six feet, but this is a good example of something that, um, yeah, that we're trying to, the message we're trying to send. So I think that's a really great post, but don't forget to use the hashtag actually in the copy. Also, not just in the photograph, right? That, yeah. So that, that's important. So th these things matter. Just explain that again. So when people are doing something like this, it's not yeah, an so, here, yeah. 
Exactly. You have the hashtag in the image, um, and you also have tagged us in the image. Uh, so if you can, just make sure that you double, you, you, you tag us and use the hashtag in the copy when you're posting that on Instagram. You can also post it on Twitter, wherever you're most active. Okay, thank you. And uh, so the we in, in the couple of minutes we have left, and it's almost midnight, and uh, we don't want Samantha to uh, be awake much longer for this. But uh, you've worked with influencers for so long. What what are the keys to working with them? And we're not, let's say, I'm not a big uh, organization. I don't have a lot of budget, etc. What are some keys to making it work on zero budget or no budget or low budget? Sam. Do you want me to kick off? Yeah, yeah. I think that you, um, the most important thing is to really tap into where people's passions lie, um, which is something's obviously really key for a humanitarian organisation like Red Cross. We work for people um, pro bono. So find what people, where people's passions lie. You want to work with people that want to work with you for free. There's, an, you know, there's authenticity there um, and you want it to be collaborative. So don't be too prescriptive about what you're asking people to do. Um, be clear in your brief, but uh, give them enough freedom to create something that's authentic to, their, to themselves and that's going to resonate with their audience. Yeah, I, th I think that's that's great advice. Uh, do you have any uh, funny stories about things that you didn't expect to work and they worked or vice versa? Um, I have some very funny stories about organic posts um, for, that um, happened in the bushfire, some, some unexpected influences that um, we're doing things like uh, nude yoga classes and raising surprising amounts of money for Red Cross that aren't particularly people that we would work with um, usually. But you know what? Th sometimes things like that work. They're not, they're not officially on our books, but, um, but you know, it's, it's a crazy place up there, the internet. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is a crazy place. Uh, let's ask uh, the same question of Melis. Yeah, I really, I completely agree with you. I think it's really important that if an influencer is willing to work with you for free, that you need to give them their complete creative um, independence. Let them, they know what works best for their audience. So um, really like just make sure that the message that you're trying to get across is 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 relevant, is seen in, the, in what they're going to post. But you have to, it's hard, but you have to take a step back and, and trust the influencer that, they know what works best for their audience. Yeah, and while I have you, Melissa, on the screen, can you explain the IFRC and how it's connected to all the other Red Crosses? Yeah, sure. So we sort of work as um, an umbrella, I would say, not necessarily on top, but really like the connector between all of the um, all of the local Red Cross, Red Crescents around the world. It's so hard. you have to take a step back and. and Sorry, you heard your own <laughs> voice. Yeah. <laughs> Where did that come from? Did I do that? Um, uh, yeah, so um, we 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 connect all of we 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 form a federation, right? So we form this this um, this network of all of the Red Cross and Red Crescents around the world, because otherwise they would stand individually and have nothing really to to, to pull them together. And it's such a strong, amazing network of um, organizations around the world. We have almost 14 million volunteers. Volunteers are the core of Red Cross and Red Crescent. Um, and so we just stand as 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 this as this glue that holds them all together. Uh, yeah, I think that that's something that people will understand once they when they look at it. Right? It's also it's also a very long name, so explaining that uh, must be one of the adventures of working at the IFRC. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Let's let's really uh, conclude this by giving each of you a chance to share your thoughts uh, sometimes uh, you know sometimes it really works to kind of hit the points that you'd already made because there are a lot of people tuning in throughout the throughout the show so anything you'd like to add and uh, also i like to leave people with some hope with all the disinformation do you think this stuff is working uh and what can we do individually if we're not influencers what can we do if we're influencers what can we do so we'll talk about that let's go to sam first so that we can get her out of here <laughs> Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, firstly, I'd just like to encourage everyone that is joining this. If you're an influencer, if you feel like you have an audience that um, could potentially benefit from hearing about some of the messages that we're trying to deliver, please join. Please encourage others to join. And if you 
just be kind to one another. Reach out to people that might be socially isolated in the community. The power of a phone call is something that's incredible. The power of a text message. Um, just make sure that you're kind to one another at this time. Make sure that you uh, follow incredible sources of information. And um, as Nelly said, please, if you're unsure about anything, don't share it. Um, do your research and um, try to stay connected as a community. Thank you. And uh, remind uh, folks where they should be looking for Australian Red Cross. They can obviously find it on all the platforms. And uh, yep. there are opportunities for them to get involved with the Red Cross in Australia, right? Yeah, that's correct. So we're on um, all the platforms, particularly Instagram is where you'll see these activities. So we're Red Cross um, AU. All right. It's midnight, so I'm going to just let you go right now. And thank Melissa you. and I will finish this up. Uh, midnight in Australia, in Sydney. Thank you so much for being here. And you're good welcome. luck with everything you're doing. And congrats on becoming an aunt here in New York. Thanks so much. <laughs> okay. Bye, Sam. Bye, -bye. Bye. Well, thank you, Melissa, for organizing this, for bringing us all together, global conversation. Uh, I want everyone to also go back and watch episode 42 of this uh, show because you taught us how to do TikTok at a global level, at the serious level. A lot of people don't take TikTok seriously when I mention it until I say the Red Cross has multiple people working on it. I also say the Washington Post has two full-time people doing TikTok, and then they say, "Wait, what a minute! Wait, how we is that have more. We have more followers than the Washington Post now." Ooh, okay, <laughs> throw down. That's very smart. And I will say that uh, TikTok is also the, uh, the the just released data, right? The fastest social media platform to a billion uh, in the history of social media, meaning the last twenty years. So that's also interesting to note. So, uh, some final thoughts from you, please. Yeah, I think this really, I, I really thank you for letting me come on here because I think the most important thing that I want to get across is if you are an influencer, or even if you don't think you're an influencer following this, if you have an engaged following, um, somebody here said that Mark's, Mark's Lee said, Sri, you don't think you're an influencer, but you are. <laughs> um, it's really important that you you try to join this campaign. You can message me here. There's my Twitter account. Message me if you want to get involved. Um, it's really like we need an army of, of factual information. We need an army of people that are are going to spread the right spread the right information. And not only that, like um, Sam was Sam was really talking about being kind. Just making everybody understand that we're all in this together. We have to be kind to one another. Um, so if you're an influencer message me, get involved. If you're not, follow hashtag spread facts, not fear, and um, there'll be some great, uh, great information for you to follow there. And thank you so much for doing this and for being part of our global family here. I know you're missing New York and New Jersey, and uh, we, we gave you a taste of that by uh, pointing the camera out this window here in New York. Uh, how will you know when things are back to normal-ish in the Red Cross family? I honestly, we don't even know when we're going to be working back in the office. It was mentioned that some people not, might not be back in the office until there's a vaccine. So I don't know if normal is going to be happening anytime soon. Yeah. And I, I can see that oh, the vaccine question is really important for our audience because we are seeing, if I may show you uh, a quick example of the problem that we're dealing with just very quickly, we talked about that pandemic being a, a problem. So I'm going to show you a comment from someone I know and respect who's asking, how do you then account for Luc Montagnier, I don't know how to pronounce his name, Nobel Prize winner from France, head of the Pasteur Institute, who supports that film, that evil, terrible film. So here's what I'm going to show everybody, that uh, just because you have a Nobel Prize, which is obviously awesome that you, that you do, doesn't mean that you're right in everything. Aung San Suu Kyi, Nobel Prize winner uh, in one category, uh, somebody who is condoned, tolerated, evil in... Uh, the Myanmar regime now. So that can happen. So keep that in mind. And in this particular case, there's already a um, Wikipedia entry on Luc Montagnier's uh, page, which says Montagnier argued that COVID-19 was man-made in a lab and it might have been an attempt to create a vaccine for HIV AIDS. His allegation came blah, blah, blah. You can see that. Uh, however, this has been described as a conspiracy vision that does not relate to real science an immunologist and head of the scientific council that advises the French government. An article in the Wire magazine explained how scientists refuted the claim. So just to say that just because a Nobel laureate says something 
doesn't mean it's true. And uh, the Nobel Committee would be the first to uh, admit that, that uh, the things uh, you're, you're recognized for specific work at a specific time in your life. Uh, there are many people you and I respect, Melis, over time who, whose opinions change about things. And, uh, and now this is a stain on his legacy uh, that he decided to go down this route. And so just everybody who is thinking about, you know, it, we're always looking for, like, we may never have heard of this guy, but because he said it in his title, he must be accurate. Yeah. People make mistakes. Uh, people uh, are influenced by all kinds of things. I'm, I'm thinking, Malis, of the, uh, of the fact, as you know, that uh, in the 60s, Harvard University had a chance uh, to focus on fat or sugar as the problem that would uh, you know, this, yeah. help in America. And as you know, mm -hmm. uh, Harvard University researchers took money from uh, the uh, sugar industry and focused on fat. And as a result, you've seen the health conditions in America versus every other country in the world. Mm -hmm. And so just because there's a brand name doesn't mean it's automatically good. Doesn't mean it's bad, of course, but yeah. doesn't mean it's automatically good. And we need to remember that. Wayne is saying, thank you for curated information. So we appreciate that. And uh, 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 we have so many other comments coming in. Uh, James is saying, uh, uh, so I, I showed something that maybe I shouldn't have shown because we're going so fast. My dad's watching uh, in India. Thank you, Acha, watching in Kerala. Have you been to India, by the way, Melis? Not yet. My, hus my husband is from Pakistan, so I visited Pakistan quite a bit, but I haven't come to India yet. Well, you must go, and you must. I'm sure my dad would invite you down to Kerala, <laughs> uh, which is God's own country, as we like to say. And uh, I'm sure they would love to host you there and, and meet the family as well. I so love it. do that. Uh, we will let Melis go. I have some housekeeping and uh, some other things that I need to do. But thank you so much, Melis, our, so our, 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 our guest, Melis, from the IFRC. Uh, she is someone who really understands technology and how to do communications at a global scale at this time. Uh, what were some of the stats you told us? How many TikTok followers did you have? before like in december versus now do you remember some of those numbers dante gave the one from before but i i mean we only started uh on TikTok in august and now we have 1.6 million followers yeah and you are the gold standard in how you use TikTok for serious things um i think i told you that my kids were horrified when i joined TikTok, and they said uh you know we don't want you to be another indian dad on TikTok. apparently there's a lot of indian dads indian and uncles indian dads and so I said, but Will Smith is on Twitter, on, you know, on TikTok, and he's a dad. And they said, you're no Will Smith. And they, they're right. But with that, we're going to let Melis go. Thank you so much for being with us. We are very, very grateful. And Thanks so luck. much. And please keep in touch and come back, please, and share more information. I will. Thank you so much for having me. Take care. Bye. Terrific uh, guests, uh, both Sam and Melis, uh, joining us from Geneva and Sydney. And we're here in New York so important for us to say thank you to our audience you make the show our guests make the show but you make the show so thank you for being here with us thank you for sharing your information thank you for uh giving me support at this time 78 shows 78 shows and we have so much more to go we're coming up on friday night at 9 p.m we're going to do a show that's really important about running during COVID 19 for elections and we're going to meet two candidates who are running here in New York City and what it's like to be a candidate. Uh, if you know anyone running for office right now or anywhere in the world who should be on our show, email me. Sri at Sri.net is my email address. And we'd love to uh, get that information, maybe get them on the show Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern time. And then on Saturday at 9 p.m. Eastern time, we're going to have to do uh, perhaps our most important episode around what's happening in COVID-19, where we're going to look at what's happening with people of color in America. Uh, we are at a complete crisis point, folks, uh, in the United States. Uh, people of color are being killed disproportionately by the virus and also being killed disproportionately in so many other ways and being affected in so many other ways. You saw what happened in Minneapolis with the gentleman who was uh, killed by police officers. Uh, we, you saw the incident in Central Park in New York where a woman decided to call the cops on an African-American gentleman for no reason apart from a kind of uh, altercation that can happen in a crowded city during a pandemic, but decided that calling the police was the way to go. She lost her job. Um, so many other things happening. A security guard shot and killed 
for inf uh, for emphasizing and enforcing the rules of social distancing. All he said was, please put on a mask and uh, all heck, heck broke loose after that. So all of this is saying that there is a crisis in America right now, and we're gonna cover that 9 p.m. Eastern time on Saturday. Please join us, please tell your friends, 9 p.m. Saturday, and please subscribe to our uh, our, uh, our feed on, on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all of those. Uh, platforms, but really on YouTube is where you can see our archives and you can get alerts when we are live. Before we go, we want to just tell you about a couple of other things. We have a Sunday morning show, 8.30 to 10.30 a.m., where we read the New York Times like crazy people, and we talk about the New York Times and talk about news, and we have some fabulous guests that, that have been on our show. The print editor of the New York Times is coming back on Father's Day June 17th on our show. We've been to the home of Amy Vershup, the travel editor, to read the New York Times with her. Stacy Stewart, the CEO of the March of Dimes. Harlan Coben, who is an incredible writer, worldwide number one best-selling author, and has three shows on Netflix at the same time. And Sonny Slaughter, who is a guest on the 1619 Project. And uh, those are just examples of folks who have been on our show we, this, this past Sunday. Again, if you go to my YouTube, you can see the archives. We had Corey Dean, who is the former science editor of the New York Times, and her amazing book, Making Sense of Science, Separating Substance from Spin. She was our guest on our show this past Sunday. You can find it in my archives, YouTube slash Srinet. And then this coming Sunday, we are very excited to bring you a very special guest who you will all... I know, want to see and want to hear from. Joe Stiglitz will be here, Nobel Prize winning uh, economist who has written 40 books, not all of them about economics. He writes about politics and life and all of that. So please tune in 8.30 a.m. Eastern time on Sunday. You do not want to miss this show. Nobel Prize winning economist, Joe Stiglitz, my guest on the show. Thank you to our fabulous uh, producers, Vandana Menon, Vandana underscore Menon, and Rose Horowitz, Rose Horowitz 31 for their work for 78 straight days on this show. I am so grateful to them and to all of you for participating. Remember, we have two offers for you. Number one, Muckrack Academy, my fundamentals of social media for journalists, a brand new course open to everyone. It says journalists and public relations, but everyone can benefit. Take a screenshot, send this to people. Take a photo, send this to people. Uh, it's a free certification course in June. Save your seat right now by going to mrac.co slash social, mrac.co slash social. Please tell your friends they will benefit from this. My friend Linda Bernstein and I are working very hard to make a course that we are proud of. 3,000 people have already signed up and so can you. Please tell them mrac.co slash social. And finally, we want to tell you that one of the things my company does is we do virtual events. So if you have a virtual event that you want to create, you need any help with, please email us. You can see my email is on the screen, sri at sri.net. Or you would like your own talk show for your organization, either a one-time talk show or a weekly talk show, we can help you. We can be 10% of your production team or 110% of your production team. So please get in touch and email me sri at sri.net. You see the email address right here. And please tweet me or comment anything you like. We're so grateful. We're looking for speakers. We're looking for topics. We're looking for themes. We're looking for sponsors. And we'd love to have you join us as a sponsor. And we give a big shout out to our other sponsor for uh, today who is with us, uh, clean-futures.com, clean-futures.com, Priyamvada Sustainability Consulting, PSC is facilitating sustainable development for a clean future. Sustainable development for a clean future. Hire them to be your chief sustainability officer. So important for us to uh, focus on a green future. And thanks to Sonali Chitre from PSC for sponsoring that clean-futures.com. With that, we'll say goodbye and thank you. We'll see you on another episode live or recorded please go to YouTube and please sign up by subscribing. And also if you're a WhatsApp user and you prefer WhatsApp, how about this? We offer a WhatsApp alert. You can just join us by going on to WhatsApp or taking out your phone right now and just pointing your camera uh, at this. If you have an iPhone, you can point your camera and you will get 
uh, WhatsApp alert listing, and I will alert you. It is not a racist WhatsApp group. It is a WhatsApp group where you'll just get an alert. It's not a group, just a listing. And if you're on iPhone, you just point your phone at that. If you're on Android, you know how to use QR codes already. So that's great. Thank you very much, everybody. We'll see you soon. Bye.